This is the 2021 Acer Chromebook 515. It's a mid-range 15.6 inch clamshell Chromebook with some premium features like a fingerprint reader. And in this one, I've got an 11th gen Core i3 processor with eight gig of RAM. I've been using it to see how it stands up in 2024. And in this review, I'll cover off all you need to know about it, as well as some alternatives to consider. If you want to see my original unboxing and how much I paid for this Chromebook, I'll link that at the end of this video. So stick around to watch that next. First up, this isn't a Chromebook Plus model, so don't confuse it with the newer Acer Chromebook Plus 515. I'll also link my review of that one at the end of this video for you. The build quality feels great. The aluminium lid helps the 515 feel premium. And weight wise, it comes in at about 1.70 kg. That's about 3.75 pound, which for a larger 15.6 inch Chromebook is about standard. Performance wise, this Chromebook didn't struggle with anything I threw at it. The 8 gig of low power DDR4 RAM and the 11th gen Core i3 processor still seem to me to be more than enough for most Chrome OS tasks in 2024. In this range, there's also an option for the Intel Pentium Gold processor. I'd skip that as well as any option with 4 gig of RAM and look to this Core i3 or even the i5 with 8 gig of RAM as the sweet spot. Battery life also held up really well despite this refurb unit having a higher number of battery cycles. You can check out more on that in my unboxing video. It did have 100% battery health though, which is the thing to watch out for with any used Chromebook's battery. I think Acer's claim of 10 hours use might be a bit ambitious, but with lighter use, 8 hours would seem more reasonable to me. Recharging the Chromebook with a 65 watt charger took the battery from 0 to just over 50% in half an hour too, so it's still really practical. For the storage, the 128 gig NVMe SSD is still more than plenty for the way I use my Chromebooks. There's also a 256 gig model option to watch out for. When it came to gaming, there was no issue with the popular titles I tested with. This 515 is Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 compatible, so not the latest standards of course, but as you can see I had no issue connecting my PlayStation 4's controller. Connectivity including for cloud gaming like Fortnite here via GeForce Now was also absolutely fine. When you are pushing things a bit, you can pick up a pretty quiet level of sound from the fan, and the heat is also pretty minimal. But even using it on my lap, neither of those things really bothered me. There's a vent at the back and a grill on the bottom of the Chromebook. By the way, if you're watching this as I post it in the UK and interested in this model, do check out my recent posts on X and Threads as the seller I purchased from has more in stock. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. On the sides, you've got a decent array of connectivity. There's dual USB-C for power data and display out. And on the left, you've also got an HDMI 1.4 connection and a headphone microphone combo jack. And on the right, you've got a Kensington security slot, that second USB-C port, and a full-size USB-A port. All the USB ports are 3.2 Gen 1, and there's also a micro SD card reader. Using one of the USB-C ports with my dock let me extend to dual Full HD monitors alongside the Chromebook's display as a third. Opening the Chromebook up, and I'm pleased to see the screen goes back 180 degrees. The keyboard deck has a lot to like. There's the well-positioned fingerprint reader for easy unlocking of your Chromebook. I've also got the optional backlit keyboard, and with the larger size of this Chromebook, you get the dedicated number pad. The keys have a nice shallow travel to them with some feedback and aren't too loud. I've really liked typing away on this 515. As a bonus, the touchpad is large, smooth feeling, coated with Gorilla Glass. There's no looseness to it, and it was responsive to clicks and taps. The only thing missing from the keyboard deck for me was the speakers, rather than being there firing up at you, they're underneath. They get really loud too, at full volume I'd say too loud, and sadly the quality isn't great. Here's a quick sample using the intro track from this video. I like the display on this 515, it's a large 15.6 inch Full HD IPS panel in a 16 by 9 ratio with more of a matte finish. My one is non-touch but there is an option for touch in this generation to watch out for. I found it to be plenty bright enough for indoor use, estimates I found suggested it's 250 nits. There's a 720p webcam at the top of the display and it's got a manual privacy slider that I found I needed to use my nail to slide. Quality was fine but if you need something better then as standard a Chromebook Plus 
Plus, like the newer Acer Chromebook Plus 515, will have a Full HD webcam and the associated software features. Check out the video on the left now to see my review of it, or see my unboxing and first impressions of this 2021 Acer 515 in the video on the right now. With it still due to get Chrome OS updates until June 2031, and the overall high quality of it, for the right price in my opinion, it's definitely still worth considering a decent refurb or second-hand model in 2024. Let me know what you think in the comments though.